What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, The Network. And today's topic is section 3.21, configure and verify EIGRP load balancing. We're going to cover two sections today because I felt like these go hand in hand. Section 3.21A, equal cost, and 3.21B, unequal cost. So we're going to be covering both types of EIGRP load balancing. This is a topic in the CCMP route exam, exam code 300-101. Version 2.0, let's take a look at the exam blueprint, see where we came from, where we're headed. Hashtag lab every day. Bruh. It's the exam blueprint. We go over this a million times, but I like to do this just in case you run into the uh, video in the middle somewhere. Implementing Cisco IP routing is also known as the CCMP route exam. We wrapped up the section EIGRP stubs 3.20. Today, again, we're going to be covering load balancing, equal and unequal cost. After that, we're going to move on to describing and optimizing EIGRP metrics. I believe that's going to be just, uh, we may or may not do hands-on in that section. But anyways, uh, today we're going to be doing uh, EIGRP load balancing. So what is, first of all, before we even cover the two section, two separate type of sections, we need to talk about what load balancing is in the first place. When I think about load balancing, I think about traffic cops when I think about load balancing, right? You know how, like, say you go at a stop sign and, you know, Oh, you're at an intersection and there's no light there or there's a traffic light there and it's broken. And they have to have, obviously, a traffic cop to have some traffic. You know, they basically control the traffic. You have the even amount of traffic coming this way. And he tells them to stop and have an even amount of traffic coming this way. He needs to make sure to get an even amount. Otherwise, if he has just that would be considered your equal cost. If you have an even amount coming this way and even an amount coming that way. Unequal cost would just be, you know, he, he don't really care much about this, the people or the cars coming this way. He's letting all these cars come by. All these cars come by. And finally, let's maybe just one or two cars come by this way. Why would you do that? There's various reasons why. We're going to go over EIGRP and how it works and why we need to load balance our traffic. Let's take a look at the official definition. I don't know if I made that clear or not, but. So EIGRP load balancing. Load balancing is the capability of a router, not just a router, really. You have there's actual physical devices that are called load balancers that balances traffic. But it's a capability in this case, a capability EIGRP load balancing is the capability of a router to distribute traffic all over the router network ports that are the same distance from the network from the dis destination address. So you have maybe like four or five ports, right? You want to make sure you have an even amount of traffic going through all of them. Or it just could be that EIGRP, remember we talked about there's different, you know, there's, well, there's successor routes that are best routes and then there's feasible successes that are backup routes. Load balancing, we'll go into that. We'll go into that in the next slide. But anyways, load balancing increases the utilization of network segments so and so increases effective network bandwidth. So we could have several interfaces or several ports Let's say we got five ports, right? We want to make sure we're utilizing all of them equally. It could be some of them have different bandwidth. So we might not want to use this uh, uh, some of these ports and make sure more traffic goes this way or vice versa. Just like the traffic cop. We make sure we have a certain amount of traffic coming this way and a certain amount of traffic coming that way. That's what load balancing is. And we might have unequal load balancing. We'll go over the difference between the two. First, let's talk about equal cost. Equal cost, remember there's, okay, equal cost path. It's applicable when different paths, I just realized we might have to separate this in two videos. Who knows? Applicable when different paths to a destination network report the same routing metric value. The maximum paths command determines the maximum number of routes that the routing protocol can use. So if you take a look at this topology right here, right? We got the 10.010 network slash 24, right? Over here. Router one has two ways to get there. He can go through router two or he can go through router three down this way, right? However, the metric is the same. Metric this way is 10. The metric this way is 10. So he's got two ways. This would be considered your equal cost, right? Yeah, we may have to do this in two separate videos. Um, so if you notice, it says here, router one to router two is a successor route. Router one through router three is also a successor route. Remember, successor route is the best path 
feasible successor would be your backup path, right? So if he goes this way, the metric is 10. He goes this way, the metric is 10 also. So these are this would be considered your equal cost. Now, when we use the maximum paths command, right? In this way, in this case, we've got two paths, right? Let's say we've got six paths to make it to the 10.010 network. If we set the maximum path value to six, then we're going to load balance between six paths. Anything beyond that, it's not even considered those other paths. So if we've got eight paths and we set our maximum paths value to six, the remaining two, we're not gonna use those paths. That's what the maximum paths command does. I don't even think this lab that we are gonna do next will uh, will will do that. But anyways, uh, sex is that we've we've got a couple uh, some notes here. Setting the maximum paths value to one disables load path balancing. So if we set it to one. We're not gonna load balance. And uh, there's different versions of iOS that's been you know released throughout the years. When I was first when I, when I was first reading about this, it said the maximum paths was 16. So I did a little bit further reach research and I realized the different iOSs have different um, maximum paths values. As you can see, version 12.0s was eight paths, uh, 3t was 16 paths, and now if you have the, the latest of 12 and up, if you have version 15, you can do up to 32 paths. Don't know what you you will have a large network. Yeah, there's obviously there's corporate networks that has a lot of paths to get somewhere. So this is just a simple topology to kind of explain the equal cost. So we've got to go over these uh, EIGRP terms as far as uh, uh, paths go before we talk about unequal costs, right? First, there's a successor path. That's why I did this in green. Success it will be the considered your best route to get somewhere. Right, it's the route with the best metric to reach a particular network. This will be placed in a routing table. So when you do show IP route, your successor path, successor paths will be in there. The feasible successor, in short, I'm not gonna read all this to y'all. Is basically the backup path that's placed in this topology table. You do show IP, EIGRP topology that shows your feasible successors. Then there's the feasible distance, which is the metric to the best route. To reach a network so basically the metric of your successor that's the full the full route that's how i remember it that's how i remember it feasible distance is the full amount to get there that will be listed in the round table the reported distance is the metric advertised by the neighboring router so if we go back to this right here let's say the metric for this route for this path right here is 10 and then the metric over here is 10 or right, let's say okay the metric to get to this network is 10 right so that means we didn't we don't have full metrics for this but let's say it's five here and five here so the full metric to go this way is 10 then the reported distance router 2 reports oh it's five for me to get to this network then the reported distance as seen by router 2 will be given to router 1 so he's going to say okay the reported distance is five but the full feasible distance is 10 I hope that makes sense. So router two reports, it's also known as the reported distance. Router two will report to router one. He's gonna say, hey, my metric to get here is five. So that means he's gonna say, okay, my metric to get to you is two, but my full or feasible distance will be 10. So that's the full metric to get to the 10.010 network, 10. That's also known as the reported distance. That's like the halfway mark, if, if you want to call it that. So that we've talked again. We've already explained this. The successor versus the feasible successor. Successor is your best route. Feasible successor is your backup route. You can configure the EIGRP to balance the uh, balance with routes of unequal cost with the following command. You use the variance um, and then the multiply. Let's, let's talk about unequal costs here before we even get into that. So... We've got the unequal cost amount right here. So this way to get to router, it's the same uh, same topology here. To get to router, uh, to get to the 10.010 network, if he goes this way, the metric is 20. If he goes this way, the metric is 30, right? So router one to router two, the metric, it says here, the successor route is 40. So that means uh, it could be 20 here and 20 here. So the feasible, so the successor route this is the best route right here. Remember, the lower the metric, the better. 
So this route right here is 40. And then router one to router three, it says the metric is 60. So that means 30 here, 30 here. Okay, router one to router three. Router one to router three, through router three to this network, the metric is 60, right? Router three's metric is 30. That's his reported distance, basically. His reported distance will be 30. So the feasible successor route, right here, the backup route, the metric is 60. We can use the variance command to determine, but then he's not going to he's not going to load balance because he's just going to take this route to get there. The only way he'll use this backup route is if this route right here is down. But let's say we wanted to use both paths. We want to use both paths, right, to go to the 1001 network. Then we are going to use the variance command. We're going to use the variance command. So the variance multiplier works by multiplying the successor's route by the variance. Right. If the feasible successor, this is remember the feasibility condition. I don't want to talk too much about the, the uh, fundamentals of EIGRP, but remember the feasible feasibility feasibility condition says if the feasible condition is less than the um, successor route, then it'll be used. If the feasible successors FD is less than the result, it'll be used. So right here. For example, if the successor if the successor's reported distance is 10 and we use a variance of 2, only feasible successors with the FD less than 20 will be used, right? So the variance multiplier can be between 1 through 128. Let's go ahead and uh, fire up GNS3. All right, so here's the uh, topology we're going to work with right here. We've got router 1 with several with three loopbacks on him. He's got a serial interface connected to the router 2 and router 2 has three loopbacks connected to him and uh, he's connected to router 3 and they all actually they all three all three of them have three loopbacks connected to them. They um I've already configured the IP addressing on these guys. What else did we do? We've already configured EIGRP adjacency between these two. And uh, yeah, I believe just those two, we just need to configure uh, EIGRP on router three. Let me go ahead and bring up the lab guide here. Again, you can find this on the internet. Just do CCMP route. This is an old um, student uh, student lab manual. There's a new one that's out. I believe this is version six. The new one is like version seven. So you can find this. It, this is old, but it's still, uh, it, it is still applicable to um, EIGRP load balancing. I don't even think there's really much of a difference. I tried comparing the two. But anyways, like I said, we already configured EIGRP. Let's go ahead. We need to do it on route of three, though. And um, let's see. Did the IP addressing. I already put the loop packs on there. Just to save us some time, I already did the descriptions. We can skip that part. Did the descriptions. We can, do, we can skip that part. Configure EIGRP. We already did it on route of one and route of two. We just need to do it on route of three. And they want us to do a debug command. I wanted to show you all this, too. So... Let's console in the router three. And it says here to, what does he want us to do? Enable EIGRP uh, 100. So yeah, they are one and two is participating in 100. We're gonna go into router three. We use the debug EIGRP 100 command to watch EIGRP. Install the routes in your routing table when your router becomes adjacent. You'll get output similar to the following. So let's go ahead and do that. We are going to debug. IP EIGRP 100. So now we're turning on EIGRP route events. We're going to go into global config mode and it says here router EIGRP 100. And we're going to do network, I believe it's 10.0.0. Right? Yep. And then this is what happens when you install EIGRP routes or and also enable EIGRP. So you see these routes, you see the adjacency came up and then the routes are getting installed to the routing table. And that's without going through the debugs, that's it's happening right now. But this is what it's looking like right here. We install that route. We install this route right here. A couple routes get installed. Let's go back and take a look. So, yeah, we've got some metrics here. Basically, they install the routes. Essentially, EIGRP dual. Remember, that's the algorithm that EIGRP uses. Um, has just computed the topology table for those routes and installed them in the routing table. Check to see if the routes exist. We do a show IP route. Well, we're gonna, it wants us to do it on router one. So there's the adjacency, right? 
So now he, he, he got a new adjacency. So now all three of them are participating in ELGLP 100. These are ELGLP basics. I, I, I really should skip this part, but, you know, just in case y'all not up to speed on that, we're doing a quick little review. So these are our routes, right? We have routes to everywhere. Basically, um, yeah, so we got routes to everywhere uh, between these three routes. Right here, it says to use the following T script. Basically, this is mass ping. And if you don't know what mass ping is, we do this a lot of my, at my job. You basically, let's say you got a whole bunch of routers. You need to verify that they're up and you verify you've got connectivity to them. You run this script and instead of doing ping and then the IP address, ping and then the IP address, this script will basically show you. And I did it already. I don't want to waste y'all time doing it. They're all up. Everything works. So I may do a video on TCL scripts and basically uh, mass pinging. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be my main uh that's going to be my first video where I'm, I'm kind of off topic when it comes to like exams and stuff like that. But anyways, you should receive echo replies. And we did uh, verify the neighbors. We really do have it, but I'll show you all anyway. Show you GLP neighbors. Same thing with router two. Show IP GLP neighbors. You got two neighbors. Same thing with router three. Show get out of this show IP GLP neighbors. And he also got two route two neighbors. We'll skip this part. Examine the routing table. I mean, the topology table. Show IP. It's not the same thing as the routing table. Routing table is just is routes to everywhere, basically. EIGLP topology table shows you the EIGLP topology. Routes, EIGLP routes only. It, it may be the same thing as if you do show IP route and then EIGLP, but I don't think you'll get the full metrics with that. IP topology will give you most of the, all of the metrics. Well, not all of the metrics because you got to put the all keyword. But anyways, we're just going to do topology. And here's our successor routes, right? Remember, the successor route is the best route. Feasible successor is the possible backup route. Possible backup. That's why it's called feasible. Feasible means possible. <clears throat> EIGB, EIG, EIGRB. How am I going to say this word? EIGRP builds a topology table containing all successor routes. The course content covered vocabulary, blah, blah, blah. What is the feasible distance of route 10110? See, where is that at? 10110 network is right here. He says, what is the feasible distance? FD, right there. Real simple. Feasible distance is that. Oh, yeah, and for route of three in the following output. And we showed you that. The most important thing is the two successor routes in a passive state on router three. Where are those at? Right here. Two successors. So he's got basically two equal paths. If you look at the metrics here, they're exactly the same. So we've got equal cost load balancing. How do how do we see that we see that they're equal costs? So basically, router three has two routes to get to the um 10.1.102 network. Where's that? 10.1.102 network is this right here. So router three has two ways to get there. He can go that way or he can go that way to get to this network, right? Because both routes have the same feasible distance of 410 to 4000, that, that right there, both are installed on the top policy table. The distance reflects the composite metric, more granular properties. Can you view the metrics before the composite metric is computed? I believe so. Don't remember how. Uh, oh, there you go. Use the show EIGRP topology and then that metric right there. So we're going to just run this guy right here. That has to be done in not cider notation. Dot 29 is pop quiz. What is that? Slash 29. 255, 255, Dot. Pause and think about it. I'm going to do the same thing. 248, I believe it is. Yeah, 240 would be. Slash 28, so 248. 248. And this is the received routes from router 1, right? 101031. And router 2, which is there, right? Serial 01. No, that's router. Yeah, that's router 2. That's from router 1. So the serial double zero came from router 1. Where's that at? Serial double zero. So this came from router 1. That's the metric for it. And this is the route through router two. That guy right there. All right. I wish they would have put the host names there, but they don't do that on for, for that output there. I believe you'll see it in uh, 
no, it doesn't show that in show by IP route. This output con contains the uh, commands for the following. So this basically we're seeing equal cost path right here. Observe equal cost load balancing. We can do that. We'll do a trace route to this right here. So we're going to do a trace route from router 3. And you see he took that there and there. Command to view the hops from router 3 to router 1. Notice that both router 1 and router 2 are listed as hops, right? Because both are equal ways to get there. So we could uh, turn off, basically, I think they want us to turn off, yeah, turn off CEF. You don't know what CEF is. That's Cisco Express Forwarding. So we're going to have to process every packet. This is like my very first video. Actually, it's like my second video on this channel. That That's going to give you a more explanation of what CEF or Cisco, Cisco Express Forwarding is. They want us to turn it off here. So we're going to do no IP CEF. Uh, actually, we got to go to global config mode. No IP CEF. And go to the interface, serial, triple zero, and turn it off there as well. But the interfaces are different on this, so it's no IP route. For an interface, it's real IP route cache. I hope y'all remembered all of this because this was from my, if you're a, a loyal subscriber, you will remember this from my very first video. Serial, double zero, I mean, zero one. We're going to do no IP route cache. Typically, you will not disable CEF. And then we are going to debug IP packet. And then we'll see the output similar to the following. We need to go, I believe, in uh, user exec mode here. Debug IP packet. And now we're going to ping the 10.1.102.1 network. So now see, it gets confusing. We'll have to stop it there. We're going to ping 10.1.102. We're going to ping this guy. So router 3 is going to ping that guy. Remember, we are observing equal cost load balancing. I hate this right here, so let's go ahead and ping that. We did that. Turn it off. Un all. There. We turned off all debugging. So now, let's go ahead and ping it again real quick, though, just to make sure that it was up. We pinged it that time. Anyways, um... We shut something down. I don't know what I did. Let's let's make sure we got our show IP E I G I P neighbors. We shut something down. Okay, we we brought them back up there. All right. Um. So what does he want us to do? It says here. Notice that EIGRP load balances between serial double zero and uh, basically it's yeah, serial double zero and serial double zero one. This behavior is part of EIGRP. It can help utilize underused links in the network. And how do we do that? You can see um, if we go to the debugging commands. Now, this gets a little, you know, a little funky right here. So we need to look at the, um, the debugging commands to see that it load balanced. As you can see, it went without going through all of this. You'll see that he took right here the 101103. So he took this way to get to that network. And he also took the 101203.2 network, which is right here. So he load balanced here and he load balanced here. Here as well when he pinged it. So he pinged that way to ping. This network, he pinged that way, then he pinged that way to get to that network. And that's basically what we're doing. So we're load balancing here, and that's what we did. So let's go ahead and turn off all of that and view unequal cost load balancing. Now, I could have done the maximum paths and turned it to, we've got only two paths to get there. So in other words, if we just done no, um, believe it, yes, no maximum paths, oh, actually, maximum paths one, then we're not going, we're basically essentially turning off load balancing because we're just taking one path to get there. So if we did no maximum paths, he'll pick one of these routes and then shut, uh, he's not going to, he'll under, he won't use the other route. So I've only got two routes to really, you know, so it's kind of, it's kind of pointless to kind of show you, show you that. If I had more routes, it, it, the maximum paths um, feature 
will make more sense. So we're going to skip this part right here. Perhaps you expected to see more paths. Uh, why are these routes not shown in the topology table? Well, we don't have any more paths. So um, we could show IP, EIGRP, all links. Let's go ahead and do that on router three. Show IP, EIGRP, topology, all links. And what this is going to show us, first we need to, let's go ahead and shut off. Let's go ahead and shut off all what we did earlier. Okay, so we did that command to see all the routes router three has learned through EIGRP. The command shows all the entries that EIGLP holds on this router in the network for the in the for networks in the topology, including the exit interface, the IP address in the next hop, and the serial or CERNO, so this means serial number that uniquely identifies a ne uh, destination network. So to get to the 10.1.1.8, 10, 1, 1, 10 1, 1, 8 network, so that is the 10.1.1. That's the loopback 10118 network is this right in here. So it's that loopback to get to loopback nine. Remember, it is dot nine, but it's in a network of dot eight. So to get there, he's got two ways to get there. He can go this way or he can go this way. Same thing with this guy. If you look at router two, router one, if we we, if we went around one, you'll see he's got two net, two ways to get to this network and vice versa for router two. What else they want us to discuss here? And that's what he's saying here. You see, it says one successor, but he also has a backup path here. What is the advertised distance of the router one loopback from router one and router two? So let's go to router two. Look for the advertised distance of the router one loopback. Well, router one's got three loopbacks, so maybe they talk about the 10 1 1 0, 10 1 1 uh, 3 or 10 1 1 1 9. So we'll do show IP routes and the loopback on. Let's pick one, let's pick the 10 triple one, and that's from router two 10 triple one network to get there. Advertise distance. See, this will be the feasible distance. To get the advertise, you do show IP, EIGRP, topology, all, 10 triple one. That's the feasible distance. This would be the reported distance or advertised distance is what they call it sometimes. And that's via that network, right? So from router two to get to that loopback, his reported distance from router one is is that 12 number which was this this would be the full or feasible distance i always say full or feasible because it's the full way to get there when using show ip eigrp topology why is the route to 10 1 2 1 not installed at the topology table 10 1 2 1 where's that at 10 1 2 1 which is here because only he's got he's only got one one successor the other one has probably got a lower um or a higher metric, so it's not even listed. That's most likely why. What is this advertised distance from router one? So router one's distance to that, 10, 1, 2, 1. Where's that? 10, 1, 2, 1 is here. He wants to know from router one, what is the advertised distance? So IP, EIGRP, topology, all, 10. He wants to know, what does he want to know? Advertised distance from router one. 10, 1, 2, 1 is located here. Advertise distance through router one. So through router one. Oh, that's through router three. So he wants to know from router three, what's the advertised distance to get through router one? To get through router one, 10, one, two, one. That's the feasible distance for the backup. 10, one, one, three, one, which is here. So from here, to here, that's the full dis the uh, feasible distance. That's the backup path to get there. His his best path is to get through there that way. If router two serial one serial double uh, zero zero one because my interfaces are different router if this router if this interface was shut down, would EIGRP route through router one to get to here? Would the switch be immediate? Yes, it is, because he has your piece pretty fast. And we'll see that right now, as a matter of fact. Record your answer and experiment by shutting down router one's serial double zero. 
zero one interface while while an extended ping is running as described below. So we'll do that. Start a ping with a high repeat rate. That this might be pretty long because we haven't even got to unequal calls yet, right? So he's gonna be pinging all day, and then we're gonna shut it down, and you'll see what happens, right? So he's pinging all day. And now we're going to go to router one and shut down the interface because remember, he's got two ways to get there. Right. I'm going to show you all router three has two ways to get to this network. Right. We're, we're going to shut down this interface. He can go this way or that way. We're going to shut down this interface and see what happens. Right. Global config interface serial zero one. Shut that bad boy down and we're going to look at router three and see what happens. Right. Look, he's still pinging, right? Shut that down. He's like, wait a minute. And he stops. Stops. Wait a minute. Now he's got to recalculate. We had two ways to get there. All right, we're going to shut that down. EIGRP dies. So he lost this neighbor relationship at the bottom. He lost this neighbor relationship. And now he's going to go this way. And that's what happened. You see the holding time expired. And now he's continuing to ping. Now it says here, when the adjacency goes down between router one and router three, some pings will be lost, and that's what happened. After pings are again being successfully received, stop the ping. So we're going to control shift carriage, I believe it is called. Success rate 99%. You see we've got 1644 out of 1652 pings, right? How many packets were dropped? Basically, eight packets right here were dropped, right? 1652 minus 1644, right? I'm not gonna read all this to y'all. Basically, it explained what I just told y'all happened. So let's go ahead and issue the no shut and continue the uh we're gonna observe unequal cost load balancing. So we're gonna have to basically modify the metrics to make one way uh the metrics higher and then leave the uh put the leave the metrics as is on the other way. So he's gonna have a preferred route. He's gonna have one way, one way is the preferred route, and the other one's gonna be a backup route. But we're going to be uh, essentially load balancing both paths, even though the costs are unequal. So we're going to do a no shut on that guy. And we need to fix the um, we need to go ahead and turn on CEF again. We turned that back on. Right. So we turned off C turned on CEF again. So. Now we're going to do unequal cost. I know this video might take longer than uh, than normal, but that's what we have to do to explain this. So right here it says, to demonstrate unequal low cost balancing in your, in, in your internet network, upgrade the path to the destination network through router one. So we're, we had equal cost to get to this network, right? To get to this network, we had an equal cost this way and equal cost that way. We're going to make this way a higher metric, I believe it is. So we're going to go to router one, exit, and then uh, interface serial double zero. We're going to change the bandwidth. Next video, I believe we're going to be doing the cover metrics again. And that is an EIGIP, I mean, a uh, CCNA fundamental, but it's on this exam as well. Clock rate is 128,000. We're going to go to interface serial zero one. Let's go ahead and just make sure we let's just copy and paste it that way. We're not uh, making any typos here. Oh, fuck it. Bandwidth 128 interface. And then we're going to do the same thing on router two. We're going to change the metrics on router two. Configure terminal interface serial zero slash one. My bad. Uh, zero 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 bandwidth 128. And then same thing with serial. No, my bad. Now we go to router three and uh, interface serial zero zero clock rate 128,000 bandwidth. Something I did wrong there. I forgot the rate keyword rate and bandwidth 128. All right, so we modify the metrics, issue the show IP EIGRP topology, this, so get out of that, and then put this in non-cider notation, 
not in the topology table. Let's see, what are we missing here? Uh, we are on router three. Why is that not in the topology table? Hmm, interesting. Oh, because the command is wrong. Not 248, that's 252. See, uh, so subnetting fundamental there. And there it is right here. Uh, issue the command to see what has changed. I guess we forgot to see what it looked like at the beginning. But here's our metrics for the first route. That's through router, let's see, serial double zero, which on router three is that way. That's the metric for this first route, and this is the second route, right? I'll show you again. First route metrics, that's the bottom one. Second route metrics, that's the top one, right? Through serial zero one, that one. So first one, second one. All right, what does he want us to do now? We've got one hop count, obviously, right? Two hop counts the, the going the other way. Remember, we're trying to get through which network? This one. 101102, I believe it is. Yep, 101. No, 10120. That's basically the loop back on that guy. Two hops this way, one hop that way. So we're trying to get to the loop back, right? After manipulating the bandwidth parameter, the preferred path through router three, the loop back interfaces of router two is now through router one. So instead of going this way which is two hops, I mean, which is one hop, it's better to go this way, even though it's two hops. That's what we essentially did there. Uh, but remember, EIGFP doesn't use hop counts as a metric. It uses bandwidth delay and, um, and, um, and other factors, but we've changed those, those metrics. Issue the show IP route command to verify that the preferred route to network 10120 is through router one via serial. So basically show IP route on route three. So let's do that, show IP route. Preferred route to get to the to for router three to get to the loop back on router two. That loop back right there, right? 10120 network is right here. The preferred route is to go to 101103. Where's that? This, that interface. So to get to that loop back, he says, don't go this way, which is directly connected to you. Go this way. Because we changed the, the bandwidth. And the clock rate, or in the, uh, we change the bandwidth basically. Issue the debug IP EIGRP on router three to show route events in real time. So we're gonna go to router three, debug IP EIGRP 100. Issue the variance to command. And remember, we remember how we do that, right? Pause it and think about it. I know that was probably an hour ago, but um, we back. Well, it says it right there, variance two, issue the variance two command, uh, which allows unequal cost load balancing bounded by a maximum distance of two times the feasible distance, where FD represents the feasible distance for each routing table. So we did the debug IP EIGRP 100. We're going to go to global config mode and go to uh, router config mode, which in this case, router EIGRP 100 variance two. So we're saying anything that is under the feasible dis two times the feasible, um, I believe it's the feasible distance, anything two times that under that, please, you can go ahead. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. Anything that meets the fe two times the, fe the feasible, the feasible feasibility condition you can you can load balance that and it is anything more than that you can't use it so we're gonna we're going to load balance between the two and i'll show y'all so variance two and now you're gonna see it's recalculating dual is going to recalculate again issue to show ip route to show that there are now two uh two routes to get there so show remember we had one route to get to the 10 120 network so show ip route thus the eigrp routes i thought you would be able to put your Oh, we got to put the, uh, no, yeah, 10, 100, it's still going to show all of them. No, I thought there was a way to just do, just show IP route and then the route, 10, can't you, yeah, you can do that. So I forgot, you got to put the IP address. So, yeah, I know y'all can see it there, but whatever, 10.1.2.0. 255.255.255.252 and there's that route right well that's why it gives you it gives you a breakdown of it but anyways it shows you two routes and notice it says here traffic 
share count is 25, traffic share count is 48. So we're basically load balancing just like the traffic cop, but they're unequal metrics, they're unequal costs, but we're still load balancing. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, let's do it the way they want us to do it. And I'll show y'all again a different perspective. Show IP route, EIGRP. And you can see 10120. We've got two ways to get there. Even though they're two different metrics. Obviously, that's the better route. That should be the better route right there. 101103, which is that, because we changed the metrics there. And, uh, and there's the other route. So yeah, we got two routes to get there now. Show IP, EIG, IP topology. We did that. Oh, no, we didn't do that. Let's go ahead and do that. From router three, show IP, EIG, IP topology. Again, we got two ways to get there. 10.1.102 network, right? And notice that's the feasible distance. And the reported distance to get there is this. So it meets the feasibility condition, I believe, is the, is the thing that we show. I showed you the traffic share count. With show IP, I did that already. Load balancing occurs over several serial lengths in blocks of packets, right? The number of which are recorded are in a routing table's detailed routing information. Use show IP route, which we did to get detailed view of how traffic is shared between the, the two links. And we did that when I showed you that show IP route right here. Traffic share count is 25. So we're going to send 25 packets this way. We're going to send 48 packets that way. So it's like 25 cars here, stop. 48 cars here, stop. 25 cars here, so on and so forth. So we're load balancing like that. And right now he wants us to debug. They want us to create an ACL and all this other stuff. Let's go ahead and show you real quick, though. Check the. We're going to check the actual load balancing of the debug IP, IGLP packet. I really didn't want to do this, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. I may or, not, may or may not cut this part out. So we are going to, depending on how, how long this video is, y'all know I don't like to make them too long. I want to get y'all in and out. So we're going to create an access list. Basically, we are going to filter the debug output to make it more useful. Uh, this is an extended access list right here. We're going to get out of this debug. I hate the debug IP packet because that takes, that just hogs up your computer right there. Do not, again, do I repeat. Do not do this on a production router. I, I again, I repeat, do not do this on a production router. Debug IP packet. I, I promise you, it'll blow up in production router. So, uh, 100, right? So you're gonna debug the IP packet. So from here, we're going to ping 10.1.2.1, and then we're gonna repeat 50 times. It ain't gonna blow up. Y'all know what I meant. And you can see. It's load balancing between the two. How do we do that? Router 3 just switched to load share the outbound ICMB, ICMP packet. So we're, ping, we're pinging 50 times. We're sending 50 ping requests. Normally, it's by default, it sends you five. It sends five, right? When you do ping IP address, it'll send actually four ping requests, right? And you can see if we look at this debug IP packet, we used 0, 0, 001, right? Remember, it's blocks of 25 and then 48 in this case, right? So we send 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, right? And then right here, it switches. I'll show you 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01
cache interface serial zero one no IP route cache and then we're going to get out of this we're gonna ping that IP address again now we are using the RIB right because it was saying the forwarding information base there you go you see he was using 00, zero here, 00, zero here, 00, zero here, switches over and starts using 01. You see, thank God I knew about what CEF is. Otherwise, I would have been scratching my head for the rest of this video here. But it looked like it only sent, if you notice, it looked like it only sent two packets this way through that interface there. See, notice. 10, 2, 10, 1, 2, 3, 10, 1, 2, 3. It looks like it just sent two packets versus these other ones, right? It looked like 48 right there. 48 and then the other two, remaining two, through that way. I don't know. But either way, if we do a show IP route to that location, you'll see it says that's the traffic share count, 25 to every 48 packets. Well, if you like this video, I know I took a I really dragged long through this one, but, um, you know, in the next one, we'll make it a little bit more interesting and I'll try to make sure I break down the concepts as well as uh, look over the hands on before I go over it. But for now, please comment, like, subscribe to the network.